Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Today we're going to take a look at solving shots that are composed of both tripod sections and normal translating camera sections. In the particular shot that we have here to play with, the camera raises up and then it has a nodal pan around to the side. And that nodal pan section can't be solved as part of the regular automatic uh, section because you can't establish a depth to any of the trackers in this latter part of the shot. There's no uh, baseline basically to triangulate. So right around 2.30 here, frame 2.30, there's a transition between those two different uh, sections. So what let's do is just go up and we're going to just shorten it up and we're going to make the last frame of the shot that we're going to worry about be frame 2.30. And now we're going to run an automated track on that first section of the shot. So it's running through and doing that. And I think we're actually going to need to do a little uh, cleanup here. So let's uh, take a quick look at that. There are a bunch of the distant points out here that uh, we should get rid of. And I think there are a couple sliding around down in the water here. So let's just see how we do with this off now. There we go, we have our basic uh, solution. Now, there are a couple ways to do what we're going to do next. And I'm going to show kind of the easiest and, and most reliable way to do that, um, which is to save the uh, two different sections out and do them separately. Um, it's possible to do it within one file, but uh, I think this is going to be easier. So, and one thing we're going to need to do for the sake of consistency is keep this lens field of view uh, to be the same between the two shots. So I'm going to use the value that we've got here for that next section. So let's just uh, save this first uh, version away. So there's part one. Now what we're going to do is open up this shot again and this time we're going to put in that same frame as the starting frame. So notice that we're, we've got the same frame, frame 230, is in both sections of the shot. That's important because we're going to make that frame be the cutover between the two different uh, sections. And we're going to set up the lens here. I'm just uh, cutting and pasting this value back in. So now we've set up a known lens that we have some consistency between this thing. Um, so now let's just do solution of this. It's going to be on a tripod this, in the second portion of the shot. So we'll let it go through and solve that. Now we have a solution for that. and Let's just look and see. I think there are actually a couple things over here. Where the picket fence is uh, causing things to slide from one picket to the next a little bit. So I don't want to do that. Just wanted to refine that solution a little. And yeah, we've dropped our down quite a bit. There's probably a couple more things to do. Um, so let's save this one out. This is going to be our rise part two. Now here's the fun part. We're going to open up the part one. And now we're going to merge in part two. 
So we're going to have both of these in the scene at the same time. So we're going to, we're going to make the trackers unique so that we don't have two tracker ones, for example. And now already, let's just expand our whole time range here. Um, we've got the two scenes. We can switch back and forth between the two shots. Okay, and everything's kind of in one place, but we've got two different cameras that aren't locked up the right way yet. So one thing to do, how about, that will help also, we'll just uh, give us a better looking result. Well, we've got camera one here. Um, let's switch to camera two. We're just going to set it to disabled. And go back to camera one and set up a little coordinate system for camera one. So we'll just use a couple of these points. We should have really done this sooner, but it doesn't really matter. So you just set up a little coordinate system for that. And now that final position here is what we want that second camera to use as the start for the next section of the shot. So we're going to use this splice path script to graph these two uh, paths together. So we're going to start with camera one and we're going to go out at 2.30. Camera two is going to go in at 2.30. We're going to update all the tracker positions to correct for this. And we're going to copy in the field of views that we need to do. And we'll see about the move trackers in a second. So we've just done that now. And I'm on camera one. If I expand the range now, you'll see here's the whole rest of the shot. Now the prefetcher hasn't fetched it yet. And in fact, we need to go and just tell it, oh, hey, let's, let's be able to cue the entire shot. And now we have the entire shot brought in. If we scrub through it, you'll see as we zoom around, there are our trackers at the other end, but they're not quite lined up right yet because they're still living on the first camera. So what we need to do is just go to camera two. And this is the little box that wasn't checked and isn't supported in the current synthized version yet. We need to select all of our trackers from camera two and we'll just drop them down to camera one. And now when we switch back to camera one, everything lines up to the right spot all throughout the entire length of the shot. So this is the result that we want. And now we can export this to our downstream package, do whatever we want to do, as one continuous shot, even though we solved it in a couple of pieces. And when you export, you'll get the trackers from both of these two different sections. And in this case, you'll see the trackers from the far portion, the tripod section, as well as the trackers from the normal mode as well. They'll all come in. They'll all be available the way that we've set it up this way. So you can adjust that if you like. Just real quick, we'll go and take a look at the object graph here. And here is frame 230. And you'll see that there's no spike right at that transition. Synthize has just set up a smooth transition for you. You know, earlier in the shot, you see this is the upwards motion, the Z position heading upwards as the camera boomed upwards. Later in the shot, here's the Y rotation as the camera is panning rapidly as part of that uh, tripod mode section of the shot. So you can use the same basic technique to assemble whole little sequences of different motions if you need to. You can probably manage to hack in a couple little sections of hand animation if you need to also. So it's a very flexible tool if you're careful and take a look at what you're doing. So I hope uh, everybody's able to take this and put it to good work. Thanks.